Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Farron Football First and Ten. I'm your host, Jordan Mann, and with me, as always, is Coach Rob Grandy. Hey, Coach, Jordan. Congrats on the big win this past weekend. Well, congratulations to the Mann family. Saw your brother uh, signed with Furman, and yes, you sir. got the Farron Furman connection. And, yep. Uh, it's a good time. Celebrate it as a family, and it's well deserved. So yes, congratulations. sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, for about since I've been at Farm, everybody thinks I went to Furman, so it kind of works out now. That there is a man going to Furman. So shout out to my little brother Hayden with his commitment to Furman University, and with that, Farm comes off comes off a 17-7 win against NC Wesleyan, a big conference win too after losing two in a row. Yeah, obviously anybody you play after the two games that we had lost, uh, you know, it was going to be a big one. And uh, to go on the road and heading into our bye week this week, it was imperative that we got some positive energy. And you know, our guys have played hard enough to win those games, just didn't make the plays when they were there to be made. And uh, it was great to see Saturday them, you know, get get back in the win column. Yeah, we'll start with the first drive. We get ball first and go down a heavy dose of man in white to lead us down the field set up for a field goal, but it was uh, blocked, but it was called off sides, and man punched it in seven yards later to make it 7 nothing. Yeah, it's critical getting the ball and just setting the tone offensively. It's tough to make those kind of drives and be clean enough that you're going to finish and, uh, you know, didn't make any big chunk plays, but just converted some uh, key downs. You know, the field goal opportunity with them being off sides really led to the block and continued our drive and uh, it's good to see the offense punch it in there to start the game. Yeah, the defense has been, was stout too throughout the game. The only drive where uh, NC West was to, was able to score was a third and 10, an 18 yard run, but then plus a 15 yard face mask penalty. So that's essentially a 33 yard play and that flips the field. So what were your thoughts when they came down and tied up 7-7? Yeah, we played pretty good team defense throughout the day and uh, that particular drive off the uh, the face mask, uh, which happens in the game, wasn't intentional, but just you yeah. know, playing hard and, and grabbed the wrong part of the body. And um, you know the ensuing play was a reverse that took them down. Um, you know, it was a big play for them and you know momentum changer and put them in striking distance and they punched it in to tie it up, which uh, it was good to see our defense respond from there and shut them out the rest of the way. Now, uh, the key play in the game was when Colin King came in to punt. It was a 43-yard punt, but it was down at the 8. And that's up uh, the defense. Defense has been stout throughout the season consistently. NC West having trouble to score, backs against the wall because they don't want to give up a safety. They go three and out, and they have a poor punt on themselves. It was a 27, about 23, 27-yard punt. Next play, 27-yard uh, touchdown to Dre Davis. Yeah, we talk uh, you know, all the time about complimenting each other throughout the three phases of the game. Hadn't done a lot of that in the four weeks prior and uh, something we emphasized in doing offense, defense, special teams. And uh, there's a little bit of breeze going that way. So I knew you know, it was going to be a, a tough sled and punting the ball. And um, you know, Cullen's got a, a knack for that Aussie lob punt that, that pinned them down inside the 10. And, um, you know, defense did their job getting them three and out and forcing a punt. And uh, the guy corkscrewed one to put us in pretty good uh, position. And, and then a big chunk play there got us in the end zone. So it was great to see the, the special team's effort to the defensive three and out to the conversion into the touchdown is, you know, what we talk about. And um, we got to do more of that here in the back half of the season. And uh, another play, Farham did a very good job of getting the ball back for the offense. Four interceptions on the day, but the one interception that you kind of don't want to happen is the fourth and eight at the 35, and Witcher gets the interception at the five, but I think he kind of knew it that he should have probably just batted that down. Yeah, he, he knows. He's a senior. He's having a great great season for us, and, uh, you know, the ball was in the air. It's hard to, you know, predict those things. It was fourth down, and, you know, in hindsight, you'd like it to be batted down, but – he was playing hard and made a play and uh, we lived with it and you know the offense dug it out from the five and put together another long drive like that yeah. opener which uh, you know, was capped by a field goal there at the end to put it to a two score game late in the fourth quarter and you know again another great sequence of defense makes a play offense has a drive and special teams caps it off with three points that you know essentially put the game to a two score uh, position at late in the game and you know, felt like if we managed it from there, we were going to come out there with a W. Yeah, it was uh, the interception. You can't never knack a player for not trying too hard, and that's what one thing he was doing. He was just trying to make a play like defenders do, and good good for Farron. Also, it didn't come back to hurt the offense. Like you said, that six-minute drive to come away with three points and making a low-scoring game, two possessions, especially with 5.38 to go, it kind of seems like you kind of put it away. There's still time left, but sure. you know when there's a – they have seven – total points and 
four quarters, you kind of feel pretty good with that defense and the anchor of Montel Lee in the front four as well. Yeah, our defense has played well for five weeks, and um, you know anything can happen. If you're only up by seven, you yeah. know, anything could happen to get a touchdown to tie it up, and up by ten, time in the game, the way our defense was playing, anything can again happen. But with two scores on the board, uh, you know we felt we could manage the game and get out of there with a W. Hard fought win on the road against a team that just beat Maryville the week before, 35-25 pretty handily and yeah. uh, got our attention pretty quick. And yeah. um, you know, so again, it was great. We hadn't beat that team since 2012. I don't know the last time on the road we beat them, but uh, winning in the league on the road anytime is a, we'll take it and we'll move on. I think the quarterback in 2012 for NC West was my best friend, Robbie. So good to know that the last time we beat NC Wesley it was Robbie Lanier was quarterback. Uh, just Good fun fact right there, yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Yep, yep, my high school teammate. Uh, just a quick uh, thought as well with the defense getting four interceptions, but offense also helped NC West with three uh, interceptions as well. What needs to be fixed going into the bye week? Yeah, just some of those throws. I know Zach would like to get back, and they were you know, some in the red zone, and the score could have been a lot different you know, at the end of the game with some of those possessions. But uh, – just got to be cleaner on offense and make better decisions with the football. And we preach finishing every drive with a kick, and uh, certainly we didn't do that on those three. Uh, but on top of the four picks we got, you know, Rod Smith had two, two. big ones and uh, got two big fumble recoveries. So we, we were uh, six in the turnover column and, uh, you know, haven't had a high-volume turnover game on defense as well as we played. Sure. So that was great to see and uh, really contributed to the victory. Another uh, key stat to come away is the consistency from the wide receiver of Johnny White. I mean, six catches, 58 yards. He seems to be doing now, doing this now week in and week out, and that's always good to see a reliable wide receiver. No doubt. Johnny had a great offseason, had a great spring, and uh, you could tell worked really hard this summer to come in ready to be the guy. And, uh, you know, Dre Davis is a young freshman that's uh, come on for us as well and had a big touchdown and another grab there to – I think lead us in yardage, yep. but um, four yeah, John, catches, sixty yards. Yeah, Johnny's the uh, the the leader of that outfit, and he's got some other young talent around him that that we look forward to, you know, complimenting him with uh, as we move forward. And last but not least, the uh, anchor of the offense, if you will, Brian, uh, Man, he had twenty nine carries for one hundred and thirty three yards and a TD. Nice to see him three straight weeks now over one hundred yards. Yeah, and uh, he's certainly been a workhorse since he got here, and. Uh, you know, the people say, you know, the target's on him, but I tell people you, when you carry the ball 29 times, the, the objective is to yeah. tackle the guy with the yeah. ball. But, uh, you know, they give the O-line and the receivers credit and, uh, you know, getting him loose the last few weeks. And, uh, you know, we've got this bye week to get, get rested up for the back half of the season. Well, Coach, going into the bye week, uh, what's the main focus going into the bye week? Get healthy and – yeah, I mean, you I tell the players, and it's true. You know, you know, the only buddy that, only person or team that can beat Farum is Farum, yep. and uh, we can't do that off the field, on the field, and uh, we got to be smart as coaches to work on the things we got to do better, and I got to be smart as a head coach to give them some time to get fresh and get hungry again for this back stretch, and um, you know, I think we've got a good plan. We got a disciplined team that understands where we are in the season, and. Uh, Looking forward to getting away from it a little bit and uh, getting back at it here as we go into uh, LaGrange week next week. Well, Coach, I pray that y'all get healthy going into this bye week. Uh, Farm's next game will be a home game two weeks from now against LaGrange. So come out and support your Farm Panthers. Coach, as always, thank you so much. All right, Jordan. Appreciate it.